These are the ones I can see with. You see? I'm getting to rather an interesting part, actually. It's going to go now very quickly. Unfortunately, it'll be over before I know where I am. His exterior and his personality is remote, removed, distant, rather chill. And his look is the same, rather cold. That's the first, that's the theme. And it goes on like that till it stops. If you see what I mean. His look is very, very pale, very, very pale sort of hair, very pale sort of eyes. And what comes out of him is the most gutsy bash and crash and bang you've ever heard in your life. And it doesn't go with his face. It doesn't go with his personality at all when you meet him. Of course, now he's sort of, um, he's a little tiny bit older than I am. So he's, um, he works on the old crusty act and uh, sort of eccentricity and eccentric old man of music. And uh, that's fine. He does it very well. The most important thing in my repertoire is it's because the indie rubber. And without an indie rubber, I'm absolutely sunk. So I'm surrounded. One, one's there, one here, one on there. And I spend my life rubbing out what I've written. When I was much younger, I always composed without a piano. But everyone said, oh, that's a great mistake. You must hear what you're writing. I said, I do. But in the end, I started to use the piano. And as I can't really play the piano, it's rather buggered the whole thing up. I really want to know. <laughs> if I was really a good composer, I should be able to do without a piano at all. But all the other composers I know who write without pianos, they write far too much. I, it's too much trouble to me to, uh, well, having tried it, it sounds awful, let's listen to it. What do you want to do? Look at me. I was born on March the 29th, 1902. And um, I don't know what my what time of day is so much. No use going into my horoscope, <laughs> but I think it was on a. Would it be Sunday morning? Could be. You could look that one up about eleven, I think. I didn't really know. My early upbringing was very Church of England. My mother was a singer, a contralto. Indeed, that's how she met my father, singing at recitals at Chalton Come Hardy. I always like Come Hardy myself. My family comes from Oldham in Lancashire, home of cotton mills, brass bands and other things. I was the second of four children. My father was also a singer. He'd been one of the first students at the new Royal College of Music in Manchester, which was just 10 miles away. Later, he became a singing teacher. In fact, a choir master at the local church of St. John's in the parish of Werneth. He made me sing in the choir, which I must say I didn't like at all. If I sang a wrong note, he used to rap me on the knuckles with his ring, which hurt. We lived in Werneth Hall Road, halfway up the hill. You know, terraced houses with outside loos, that kind of thing. It was picturesque, <laughs> in a kind of way. I didn't go to Oldham very much, as in Melbourne. It's not my favourite part of the world. School was a nightmare. My older brother went to the grammar school, but my father couldn't afford to send both of us. So I was sent to the local school the board school round the corner, which was very rough. 
The boys were separated from the girls by iron railings. What a pity. I remember one particular one. Eileen and Slight, she was called. <laughs> I wonder if she's about. In fact, we almost didn't go at all. When the moment of departure arrived, the ticket money had disappeared. My father had been to the pub the night before and had somehow lost the fare. We had to borrow the money from the local greengrocer. I'd never been on a train before, at least not for such a long train journey. And you can't imagine the excitement. I remember I was very sick. My mother really had to beg Dr. Strong, the Dean of Christchurch, to let me have a go. I cried, I think. Eventually, I had to do a few tests, which was all new to me. And then I sang what I'd prepared, a thing by Marcello. And it's known as, Oh Lord, Our Governor. I don't know. I think, yes, Oh My Governor, Oh Our Governor. Oh Lord, Our Governor. <laughs> Luckily for me, they took me on, and I joined up as a probationer of Christchurch Cathedral Choir School. It was horrid. The problem was I had a broad Lancashire accent, and the other boys used to sit on my head until I spoke the same as they did, properly as they thought. November 1912. Dear Mother, we have had a very nice time the last fortnight. One Saturday we went to the Dean's to tea and he showed us the state room in which Charles V slept in. I did go down in class a fortnight yesterday. I was ninth. I was sixth last week and I am now fourth. Will you send me some jam for a tuck night as I have to use school jam while someone gives me some? I am going to close my letter here. With much love, Billy. I soon found I had no aptitude for musical instruments at all. I was quite good at sport, though. I ran the hundred yards and did well in football. But I could never organise my fingers properly. It was excruciating when they tried to make me learn the violin. That really was torture, because it sounded not physically so difficult as it sounded so awful. I don't know, on one of those cheap violins. Uh, I've been just as bad on a Strad, actually. <laughs> so I thought, well, the thing is, I must make myself interesting somehow. Otherwise, when my voice breaks, I'll be sent back to Oldham. What can I do to make myself interesting? Write music. So I did. my earliest surviving work, actually. Well, I thought, I'd better try my hand at something for the choir. So I did. I was about 15, I think.
apart from anything else, Oxford was the most beautiful place I'd ever seen, a whole new world. And because of my composing, I managed to stay on at the choir school even after my voice broke. None of this would have happened but for the Dean of Christchurch, Dr. Strong, who was very musical. My parents had no money to keep me there, and somehow Dr. Strong arranged to have my fees paid. Then, instead of being sent to a secondary school, I was made an undergraduate at the college. They said I was the youngest undergraduate since Henry VIII. I was determined never to go back to Oldham, if I could possibly help it. October 1916. Dear Mother, the weather has been awful this last week. The Dean has been saying something to me about the Royal College of Music. He says it is unpatriotic of England to let slip such a musical brain. With much love, Billy. <laughs> 